the Mary and the democracy in this world is that you have access to your MP and I think that that has to be continue. Yes, I probably will be a little bit more careful and you know, it's my staff I worry about. I do worry that they are exposed to people on a daily basis in the constituency office whilst I'm protected in London. Um, yeah. But you know, we can only do so much and Joe was not in her office. Joe was on the pavement. So does that mean I can't go shopping anymore? I can't go to my son's school play? I can't go to church on a Sunday morning? I can't go for a drink on a Friday night? Because I'm, I'm going to be afraid that somebody's going to, to shoot me and that is, uh, that's the world I don't want to live in. So no, we have to fight through it. We, we can't let it win. Carolyn, great to talk to you and stirring sentiments too. Carolyn Harris, Labour MP in Cardiff, uh, who's just been to a vigil in Wales. These vigils are going on all over the country. Well, LBC's Charlotte Gay was uh, at the vigil in Parliament Square where I think Ed Miliband, Harriet Harman and other Labour MPs were there with a crowd of several hundred. Charlotte, good evening. Good evening, yeah. It was only a few minutes ago when you felt compelled to whisper. As you can hear now, completely not the case as the people that were here filling up Parliament Square, Square have was beginning to disperse. But before it was contemplative silence, all you could hear before was the, the gentle hum of traffic and a helicopter that was hovering over the Houses of Parliament. We've just been listening to hymns before, only a few minutes ago, which was sung with such sorrow as people were holding burning candles for the much-loved Yorkshire MP. Politicians came straight from a service at Westminster Chapel. Wes Streeting told the crowd the Westminster class of 2015 have been drowning in tears at the news and Harriet Harman and Ed Miliband spoke after the two minutes silence. To remember her and what she stood for. We remember her as a fighter for justice in everything that she did. We remember her as somebody who showed no fear in the face of danger. And we remember her too as somebody of the greatest warmth, the greatest generosity, and the greatest compassion. Together with the thousands that have gathered all around this country, you're showing that you mourn the loss of Joe Cox. And you're showing that you mourn the tragic loss for her two children of their irreplaceable mother. And you're showing to your admiration for what she stood for and what she campaigned for. Well, that was Harriet Harman speaking at the vigil. Thanks to Charlotte Gay, our overseas reporter, who's at the vigil in Parliament Square. There's been vigils going on all around the country. And I have to say, I think quite right too. It's a way of people paying their respects and tributes to this MP who was universally popular and liked and probably had a great future ahead of her. I'm asking what your MP is like. Do you know your MP? Do you respect your MP? Do you think they get a, a tough time, a hard time? Maybe you blame people like me in the media for giving MPs a bad name. What do you think? 0345 6060 Ollie's in Romford. Hi, Ollie. Hi, Andrew. I'm, I must say, it really does sadden me the way MPs are vilified and treated. And um, no dig at you, but I, I do feel to some extent it is perpetuated by the media to some extent. I feel people really don't recognise that these are public servants who could have made a lot more money working in the private sector. Um, it's got every... Sorry, are you, are you saying something, Andrew? No, no, carry on. I'm listening. Yeah, I, I don't think it's every MP who pays for the maintenance of their moat or their dock house. So I do feel that, uh, you know, that the indiscretions of a few have really fueled negative perceptions on, of the masses on, on, on them. And I do feel, you know, what this unfortunate um, issues um, with, with Joe Cox has really just kind of brought that to light to me. And it, it, I just find it very sad. And I, I just hope that we can all, you know, wake up to the fact that our MPs are public servants who are sacrificing and not really making that much money compared to what they could make if they were in the private sector. That's, those are my thoughts. And, and, of course, your MP, I know, uh, uh, Ollie, in Romford, Andrew Rosendale, um, very popular local local boy, isn't he? I've met Andrew Rosendale, a great man, a real, real great man. He's actually come to my church 
He's always uh, all the all the events in the community. He's there. He speaks to people at his surgeries. I mean, these are people who work. I mean, he came to my church on a Sunday. I, I imagine most people are relaxing with their families on such at such a you know at weekend. But I just think it speaks to the hardworking nature of, of the majority of MPs. I think it's sad that we don't recognise it in this country. I, I don't, my parents come from Nigeria, and I must say, when you see an MP or a governor, there's a lot more respect, a lot higher regard, and I feel we've lost that. If you're a doctor, if you're a teacher, if you're a nurse, you're respected, but it's not the same for teachers, uh, for, for MP. Sad, I All right, Ollie, thank you, thank you for that. That's Ollie in Romford. Anna's in Maidenhead. Hello, Anna, good evening. Hello, good evening, Andrew. What do you want, what do you want to say, Anna? Well, my MP um, is Theresa May, the Home Secretary. Oh, yes. Uh, yes. Yes, um, and uh, she is absolutely lovely. Um, she's always out and about at the schools and various things that go on in the area. Um, I bumped into her only a couple of weeks ago doing her shopping in the local Waitrose, and she had her husband with her. I don't know if she had security with her or not. If she did, they were very, very discreet. And, um, you know, uh, as I said, uh, I've seen her um, and spoken to her personally. I also saw her on the train before she became Home Secretary, mm -hmm. um, going up to London one time. And we, we were standing at the local station on the platform just chatting about bits and, you know, just... Yeah. Uh, but again, whether she had security with her, they must, they may or may not have been very discreet. Um, when she was in, when, Anna, when she was in Waitrose, did lots of people recognise her, or did, was she able just to get on with her shopping like any other uh, person? Yes, people recognised her. 